So whatever happened to the old Chevy, you wonder? Well, here it is, under the care of Dave Doffney, the car whisperer. And he says his plan is to get the old Chevy on the road again. You know, they say a cat has nine lives, and the Chevy certainly isn't far off. It always managed to get Peter wherever he was going, winter, spring, summer, or fall. Like on this visit to Piscataquis County in Maine, home to Maine's tallest peak, Mount Katahdin. To this flatlander, close up for the first time, Katahdin doesn't look like a New England mountain. One is reminded of the Rockies. It has an almost mystical aura that led Native Americans to shun the upper heights. A man from Boston, Charles Turner Jr., led the first party of white men to climb Mount Katahdin in 1804. Four decades later, Henry David Thoreau made the ascent writing later, what a place to live, die, and be buried in. There certainly men would live forever and laugh at death and the grave. Katahdin is part of Baxter State Park, named for the visionary Maine governor, Percival Baxter, who after leaving office in the mid-1920s, began buying parcels of land to include in a park that would be forever wild. Baxter gave more than 200,000 acres in trust to the people of Maine. What body of water is this, Jensen, right here? This is Lower Toad Pond. Park Director Jensen Bissell is now in charge of fulfilling Governor Baxter's mandate that the park be preserved and open for the outdoor pursuits he enjoyed here as a young man. The governor gave the park to the people of the state of Maine, but there are no restrictions at our boundary to who gets in. So we do try to protect our resource first. That's far and above our, our, our utmost priority is the protection of the resource and the wilderness qualities of the park. And secondly, to provide recreation for people of Maine and, and others. To capture the salty flavor of the Maine of bygone days, you have to travel a bit, as in an eight-hour drive in the old Chevy to the far northeast corner of the state. Eastport bills itself as the easternmost city in the United States, a short row and a dory from the Canadian border. That's Campobello Island, New Brunswick, just to the east. Both sit on Passamaquoddy Bay, a stunning waterway where bald eagles are nearly as common as seagulls and white-tailed deer browse at the water's edge. Eastport has a frontier feel. Witness the name of a former bank, now the local police station. It is charming, scenic, and in recent decades, a hard place to make a living. The city's 21 sardine canneries are empty and crumbling. Nice to meet you, Maynard. Yeah, very nice. Just to the north in the town of Perry, Maynard Morrison had faith that the once abundant herring would return. He kept his fish weirs while his neighbors let theirs fall apart. Last year, Maynard surprised everyone with a banner year on sardines, sold by necessity to a Canadian packer. Last year was an odd year. We just kept at it, and so many people says, you're crazy, Maynard, spending now all that money building these wares. I'm, oh, I says, they are coming back, and it's a great deduction, too. I fool around with the stock market, and I do quite well sometimes. <laughs> so I need some deductions. And they did come back. <laughs> and they come back last year. <laughs> Driving around the hills of Eastport, outsiders are often struck by the graceful old houses, some restored by outsiders, many with great bones, as the realtors say, just sitting and moldering away. The mystery writer Sarah Graves and her guitar maker husband John Squibb stumbled upon this house 10 years ago. In June, we'd never heard of Eastport, and that Christmas we lived here. Sarah Graves' Bantam Mysteries are unique, billed as a Home Repair is Homicide series. In them, she sprinkles restoration tips practiced by her heroine in an old Eastport house where murdered corpses have been known to turn up. There's very useful stuff in these books. I guess so. I mean, unless you really want to murder somebody, there's no sense reading murder mysteries for information. But uh, yes, and I really do try to make sure that the hints or tips that I give are legitimate. While Sarah Graves dabbles in death and home repair at the computer, 
Her husband, John, turns out acoustic guitars in his attached shop. We learned he's a pretty fair musician as well. Sarah Graves' latest mystery series is Death by Chocolate, and the setting is a bake shop right on Eastport, Maine. And back to Baxter State Park, Park Director Jensen Bissell has retired since Peter's visit. He looks forward to being a visitor, though, saying the park kind of gets into you, and you take a piece of it with you. By the way, the northern terminus of the Appalachian Mountain Trail is the summit of Mount Katahdin. Up next, when we come back, where to find a classic old wooden boat. <laughs> 